Hi, welcome to the video lecture series for HKN at UIUC. My name is David and today we're going to go through the frequency response of an LTI system. Problem statement. Given the following circuit, find the frequency response H of omega, the magnitude of the frequency response H of omega, and the angle of the frequency response. So, the first thing that we want to do is we want to convert this circuit into phasor form. When we take the input voltage, VI of T, the phasor form of this voltage is just going to be Vn. Similarly, the phasor form of V out will be V out. Whenever we convert from the time, time domain for the capacitor, we're going to remember that the impedance of capacitor is going to equal 1 over J times omega times the capacitance C. So for our one farad capacitor, we have that the impedance is equal to 1 over J omega ohms. For the impedance of a resistor, we're going to have that it's just equal to the resistance. So the impedance of our resistor is 1 ohm. So now that we have the phasor form of this circuit, we can go and solve for V out in terms of V in. So what we're going to remember right now is the voltage divider rule, which says that for two systems in series, or two resistors in series, the, ver the voltage across one resistor is going to equal the resistance of that resistor times the equivalent resistance of the two resistors in series, or divided by the equivalent resistance of the two resistors in series, times the source voltage, in our case Vn. So related back to our case, we have that the voltage V out is going to equal the voltage across, or the resistance, impedance in our case, of the resistor divided by the equivalent resistance of the resistor and the uh, conductor, can the capacitor in series, times the input voltage Vn. Now that we have our V out in terms of Vn, we can solve for H of omega, or our frequency response. This is going to be in terms of the output phasor Y divided by the input phasor F which in our case is V out over V in. So, if we try and solve the equation up here for V out over V in, move this over to the other side and we see that V out over V in is equal to one over one plus one over J omega. To simplify this, we're gonna multiply by J omega and get that our V out over V in is equal to J omega over one plus J omega. So we have that our frequency response, h of omega, is equal to j omega over 1 plus j omega. Now that we have our frequency response, we've solved one part of the problem, and we can go on to solve the magnitude of the frequency response. So if a couple things that we want to remember right now are that for a complex co number, c, we know that the complex number times its complex conjugate, c star, is going to equal the square of its magnitude. So the magnitude of a complex number C is going to be equal to the square root of the complex number times its conjugate. Also, we want to remember that for two complex numbers A and B, the magnitude of their division is going to equal the magnitude of the numerator divided by the magnitude of the denominator. So if we apply these rules, we can say that the magnitude of J omega over 1 plus J omega, our frequency response, is equal to the square root of our numerator times its complex conjugate, so j omega times negative j omega. Extend that square root, fix the w. Divided by the square root of the numerator or denominator times its complex conjugate, so 1 plus j omega times 1 minus j omega. This is going to simplify to the square root of omega squared over the square root of 1 minus j omega plus j omega minus j omega squared. All right. So we have that, after a little simplification, that the magnitude of our frequency response h of omega is equal to the absolute value of omega, because this square root never produces any negative values, divided by 1 plus omega squared. And that is because these two cancel and then this provides or this creates a negative omega squared squared negatives cancel you get a 1 plus omega squared so we have the amplitude next we're going to find the angle 
So here we want to just remind you that the angle of two complex numbers, A and B, is equal to the angle of A minus the angle of B. Also, which we're going to use more here, is that the angle of a complex number C in the form C is equal to A plus JB is going to be the arctangent of B over A. So what we want to do is kind of put is kind of find our frequency response in this term, so a plus jb. So how we're going to do that is we're going to take our complex number and we're going to multiply on the numerator on the numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate one minus j omega. It's going to give us j omega plus omega squared over one plus omega squared. So now, with a little algebra, we can see that we have a complex number in terms of a plus jb, with a is equal to omega squared over 1 plus omega squared, and b is equal to omega over 1 plus omega squared, which follows that b over a is going to be 1 over omega. So we have that the angle of our frequency response, or our complex number c, is going to be equal to the arctangent of 1 over omega. So what does this all mean? We got our two equations up here, but we're not really sure what it actually does. So if we have three signals, cosine 100t, cosine 1t, and cosine 1 hundredth of t, we can see that we have three omega values, 100, 1, and 1 hundredth, respectively. respectively. So if we look at just the magnitude responses of these signals, for cosine 100t, we have that h of omega, or the magnitude of h of omega, is equal to 100 divided by the square root of 1 plus 100 squared. Now we can, we can, uh, we can say that this is about going to be equal, this is going to be about equal to 1, because the square root of 100 squared plus 1 is going to be about 100. So, as this as this signal goes through the th th goes through our circuit, the frequency response is about the same. So it's going to be it's going to have about the same magnitude. We can go on and look at cosine t, and we can see that the magnitude of the frequency response is going to be one over the square root of one plus one. Now this is going to be the square root of one over or this is going to be one over the square root of two, which is about equal to 0 0.707. So from here to here, we see that this signal gets a little more dampened than this one. It's about 70% of the, the original, right? We can see this even more so in the 0.01t signal. The amplitude of this frequency response is going to be 1 hundredth over the square root of 1 plus 1 hundredth squared, right? Now this is going to be about 0. So this is going to be about 1 in the denominator. And we can see that this is going to be about equal to just one hundredth. Now, we know that this one hundredth is a lot smaller than that 0 0.707. So we see that this signal is a lot more dampened than this signal, which is a lot more dampened than this signal. Now, we have a little visual representation for you right here. We can see this high frequency signal in the red, right? Really fast. And we see a smaller, or a lower frequency signal with the same amplitude pre filter in the green and then we even see a, and then we see an even lower ma lower frequency signal in the blue the same magnitude now after they pass through a filter we can see that the red almost keeps the exact same amplitude but the green however is dampened slightly we can see even more so that the blue the lower magnitude is dampened even more so the way that this works you know conceptually or the way that we would we would apply this in a real world system is say we have a lot of data at a high frequency value so as omega increases we have all this data up here that we want to that we want to you know that we want to keep but say we got a lot of noise down here almost overpowering so what this high frequency filter does is it takes this noise and it cuts all the amplitude out so that we only see this this higher frequency amplitude that we want to see or the, the data that we want to find so this high pass filter keeps the higher higher frequency signal and dampens the lower frequency signal so that we can retain the data that we want at the higher frequency.